Hi folks, welcome to Buzzbridge and Hambledon Church Online. I hope you've had a great summer so far. Uh, just a couple of things to draw your attention to. Um, please check the website regularly. Um, there's a lot of changes happening over the next few weeks, so please keep up to date through the website. I uh, just want to draw your attention to uh, Sunday the 6th of September. Uh, we're going to have a really special service, which is the Busbridge and Hambledon Church big drive through. So we're going to meet in a field. We're going to stay in our cars and we're going to do a service. It's going to be live. Um, it's going to be great fun. And we uh, would love to invite you all to come. Details of where we're meeting uh, will be on the website soon. So please do check out the website. But that's Sunday, the 6th of September at 10 a.m. for the big drive through. Look forward to seeing you there. So let's stand, uh, turn up the volume and let's sing together. Uh, praise of God.
sins and my sorrows, He made them His very own. He bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone. Singing, how marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall live. I last shall see to be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me singing how marvelous Father, when your son Jesus took his followers away to have a rest, he had just heard bad news. His cousin John the Baptist had just been cruelly killed. Father, please comfort those who have lost loved ones today, and please bless and heal those who are sick. Jesus and his followers were looking for a place to rest. Help us also to find a place to rest as these summer holidays come to an end. We thank you for the joy and fun of summer holidays. We pray for those returning from holiday to find that they are not allowed to leave their homes, that they will use their quarantine as a time of rest and a time to draw closer to you. Having found a place to rest, Jesus and his followers found that it was full of people who wanted to see him. Heavenly Father, Please help those who are under pressure. We pray for our national leaders that they will have wisdom. We pray for teachers as schools reopen, and we ask you to look after and protect children as they return to school. Lord, please help us also not to lose the lessons we learned during lockdown, to slow down, to stop rushing, and to listen to you. The people who wanted to see Jesus were, he said, like sheep without a shepherd. Father, please guide those who do not know which way to turn. We pray for those who have been badly affected by exam results. We pray for those who are disappointed, those who have lost their homes or their jobs, and those who have had to cancel things they were looking forward to. Jesus had compassion on these people. Father, help us also to have compassion on those on, in need. We give thanks for the food banks, for Trolley Tuesday and for the coronavirus response team. And we, give, and we pray for the strength for all involved. Help us to continue to be generous. Jesus taught the people many things. We pray for our church leaders and give thanks for them. We also give thanks for our music teams and our youth and children's workers. Please inspire them as they enter a new term and as churches open up again. Seeing that the people needed food, the disciples used their common sense. Heavenly Father, your son thought outside the box. Please show us when we too need to do this and help us to use the gift you have given us of creative imagination. 
Five loaves and two fish fed a crowd of 5,000 people with lots left over. Lord, we give you praise and thanks for this miracle. We also give you praise and thanks that there is more than enough on this planet to feed everybody. Lord, please guide those who provide our food. Help them to preserve the world's environment and to distribute food wisely so that everybody has enough. We weep for those who are in need because of natural disaster, disease and war. And we long for your reign of peace to come. We ask this in the name of your beloved Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Gospel according to Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 to 44. The apostles now rejoined Jesus and reported to him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come with me by yourselves to some lonely place where we can rest quietly for they had had no leisure even to eat, so many were coming and going. Accordingly, they set off privately by boat for a lonely place, but many saw them leave and recognised them and came round by land, hurrying from all the towns towards the place and arrived there first. When he came ashore, he saw a great crowd and his heart went out to them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he had much to teach them. As the day wore on, his disciples came up to him and said, This is a lonely place, and it is getting very late. Send the people off to the farms and villages round about to buy themselves something to eat. Give them something to eat yourselves, he answered. They replied, How are we to go and spend two hundred pounds on bread to give them a meal. How many loaves have you? he asked. Go and see. They found out and told him, five, and two fishes also. He ordered them to make the people sit down in groups on the green grass, and they sat down in rows, a hundred rows of fifty each. Then, taking the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples to distribute. He also divided the two fishes among them. They all ate to their heart's content, and twelve great basketfuls of scraps were picked up with what was left of the fish. Those who ate the loaves numbered five thousand men. According to a recent news report, how much do you think Jeff Bezos, who is the founder of Amazon, made in one single day in July of this year? Just in one day, have, have a bit of a, have a guess. The answer is 10.2 billion pounds in one day. 10.2 billion pounds. I'm just gonna leave that there for a moment. In our summer sermon series, we are looking at miracles in the Gospel of Mark. Um, and if you get involved in a miracle, you would expect to be uh, gobsmacked or flabbergasted or any of those wonderful words that we use to describe being really, really surprised by something. Surprised by something because it is so out of the ordinary as to be unbelievable. So I wonder if uh, there was a, a moment in the reading of the Feeding the 5,000 that was a jaw-dropping moment for you. I have to say I find it hard to be surprised by the retelling of that story because it's one with which I'm familiar. I, I know the punchline. I don't quite get the sense of what. I just don't believe that. Um, which I did do when I was told the Jeff Bezos fact which is why I told you, just so that you have that feeling of utter surprise. What I'd like to try to do is recover that wow feeling, that feeling of being bowled over all over again by the unbelievable. So let's go back over the passage, feeling of the 5,000, and just look at what God might be teaching us. I think what he's saying in this passage, or what we are to learn from this passage, is that 
God has a miraculous capacity for action, that he is able to do the unbelievable. And maybe that's something we forget. The feeding of the 5,000 is clearly a very important event because other than the resurrection stories, it's the only account in the, in the Gospels that appears in all four of the Gospels and actually probably twice in Mark and in Matthew. The disciples have just come back from the first time they are sent out by Jesus to preach. The class of AD 30 is back and they're full of stories and enthusiastic retellings of their successes and their failures. Jesus may have just heard the news that his cousin and teaching mentor, John the Baptist, has been murdered. That's certainly what we are told in the chapter that just precedes this passage. So that might be what's going on for Jesus. And now he's got the disciples back who are desperate to share their experience with him. Does Jesus tell the disciples, yes, I will listen to you, but I've just had some bad news. Let me just grab something to eat, gather myself, and then I'll, I'll listen. What he actually says is, come away with me by yourselves to a quiet place. That's an unbelievable offer. That's God saying, come with me and let's spend some good quality time together. I wonder if we hunger to share our experiences with God, because if we do, God has got a miraculous capacity to dedicate really good time to us to listen. And Jesus then goes on, he says, because you need some rest. God has a miraculous capacity to respond to our needs, even if we're not even aware that we are in need. So Jesus and his disciples get in a boat and they set off across the lake. They're heading for somewhere way out on the other side of the lake, but the people see what's happening and they begin to run round the lake shore so that they can be where Jesus is when he lands. No one is making this crowd follow Jesus. This is spontaneous. This is joyful. From all the towns they come, a community on the move. This is what being fired up for God can look like. I wonder if we have that same hunger for God. Do we put ourselves out quite so much to follow, to listen? So when Jesus arrives at the solitary place, he finds a large crowd. Think Bournemouth Beach. How does he react? Is he angry? Is he frustrated? Does he get back in the boat and set off for the middle of the lake? He certainly has that option. God could withdraw, but he doesn't seem to have the heart to do so. Because what he actually says, verse 34, is he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. This is an expression of God taking full and complete responsibility for our care. That's a response, the enormity of which should shock us. And because he cares, what does he do? He teaches. That's what he thinks is most important to do. And he teaches without PowerPoints and without any sound. Is that not surprising? This is a huge crowd. How do they all hear? They must have passed the message from the people at the front of the crowd backwards. And they must have done that with such enthusiasm that hearing that story for the fourth, fifth, tenth time in the retelling was just as engaging. God has a miraculous capacity to teach if we are hungry to listen. And we can be a part of that teaching by passing the message on. Verse 35 then says, it is now late in the day. The crowd is so hungry for Jesus' teaching that they've stayed way beyond the time at which it was sensible to start for home. And even then, it isn't Jesus or the crowds who call time. It's the disciples who suggest that Jesus sends the people away now so they can find something to eat. The disciples don't want the responsibility of this huge crowd. They say, we're not called to be shepherds after all. 
And look at Jesus' response. Oh, yes, you are, he says. You feed these people. You feed these people. It is your responsibility. And the disciples' response is immediate. They say, well, that makes no sense. How, how can we afford to do that? How long would that take? I almost feel I can hear Jesus sighing here. He's challenging them to think creatively, to have faith in God's miraculous capacity to provide, to trust in God's miraculous capacity to provide. Isn't this a challenge to us too? How quickly do we voice all the practical reasons why we just can't be a part of that? There's so much about the event of the feeding of the 5,000 that should surprise and challenge us before we even get to the loaves and fishes bit. I want just to mention a possible explanation for this miracle, being that there was an initial selfless sharing by a few which caused others to share as well. As I've explored, I think what this event is about is demonstrating God's miraculous capacity to provide for us. But the capacity of humankind to provide for one another is just as miraculous. Perhaps precisely because it's much less dependable. In all that's happened over the past few months, I think people's compassion one for another has defied all expectations and is very much to be celebrated. Humankind's capacity for action to help one another seems to have been reawakened. And I think we need to be a part of doing all that we can to keep that capacity thriving. But back to the moment, Jesus tells the people to sit down in groups. Why? Because he wants everyone to quieten down and watch every single one of them. He takes the loaves and the fish and he looks up to heaven and gives thanks. This is a very public acknowledgement of his trust in God's miraculous capacity to provide. As he breaks those loaves, the symbolism for that Jewish crowd would be enormous. God's miraculous provision of manna in the wilderness, Exodus 16, was and still is remembered every Jewish Sabbath as the bread is raised up and blessed before being broken. There are echoes too here of 2 Kings chapter 4 verses 42 to 44 where Elisha feeds a hundred men with 20 loaves. In today's passage Jesus demonstrates his capacity to surpass this, feeding more people with baskets left over. Jesus is actioning God's miraculous capacity to provide. This is God patiently crouching while he breaks bread until 5,000 people are fed. It is time consuming, physical, hands on effort, which defies the laws of nature. But would we expect anything less from God? That there is enough bread to feed 5,000, what we perhaps feel we're supposed to be surprised about, is potentially the least surprising turn of events at all. Or it should be if we've properly tuned into everything that leads up to this point. After all, this is the God who created heaven and earth. The creation of bread for 5,000 is well within his capacity. What's amazing, what's miraculous, and what's been signposted throughout this passage is that God cares so much that he is prepared to use his capacity to take miraculous action. 
it's a bit like the Jeff fact that I began with. You probably would have guessed that it was going to be a huge figure. It's just the enormity of the figure which was shocking. So here we know God is all powerful. What's miraculous is that he chooses to use that power, that capacity to provide for us. Of course, here Jesus is foretelling the Last Supper where he will bless bread and add a further miraculous layer of meaning that this bread is his body. God's miraculous capacity to provide has moved God to the ultimate sacrificial action made eternally complete at the cross. And God's miraculous capacity to provide is what we celebrate every time we break bread together in communion. When we do, what we say is, we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. God has miraculously provided. Now it is our turn to act. Our hands are needed to put in the time and the physical effort to share in the breaking in of the kingdom. What exactly will that require of us today, next week, next year, as individuals and as a church? What are we prepared to do in response to God's miraculous provision for us? The answer to that question should perhaps surprise even ourselves. Amen. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing Call for songs of loudest praise Teach me some melodious song Yet sung by flaming tongues above Praise the mount I fixed upon it Mount of thy unchanging love Thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. Some of you saw it, some by flaming.
Well, thank you so much for joining us for our online service this week. As I said earlier, please check the website uh, for updates as we look forward to all that God's going to be doing with us at Busbridge and Hamilton Church over the next term. But now let's finish with the blessing. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with you all and all those for whom you pray, now and forevermore. Amen.